Welcome everybody um, to the online live division meeting for the IESA. I just want to go through a few general housekeeping things as we get started with the meeting. Um, if you have any questions during the meeting, you can enter these into the chat line down at the bottom of your screen. Um, again, there is another administrator online for this meeting and, and they will be able to answer some questions in there. If there are some general questions for the entire group, I will address those as well. Make sure that when you're putting a question into the question line, you are sending it to everyone, not just the presenter, so that the other administrator online can see those. Another reminder is to stay online following the end of the meeting so that um, you can take the survey at the end. The survey is what the IESA will be using for attendance at this meeting, so please make sure you do complete the survey at the end of the meeting. This will appear after I have ended the session of the meeting, so stay online even after I've sent it in, a, and the survey should pop up into your box. If it doesn't, you can send me an email, and I'll be happy to send you the survey uh, via email. Make sure that when you're filling and completing out the survey, you are entering in all the schools you are representing um, for this meeting. So if you have multiple schools in your district and you are the representative for all of those schools, you type in all the schools that you are representing. This is our, our new for us and we have found generally that these live online meetings have been going fairly well. It's one of 14 meetings that we are conducting throughout um, the fall here for attendance. We have had two live meetings, um, one at the AD workshop in the fall uh, in September and we just concluded our uh, live workshop at the IPA um, to help meet those attendance as well. But generally the feedback has been good. If you have any concerns um, about the online meetings, we'd be happy to um, take those uh, questions as well. Well, again, then we'll get started here. Uh, just a, a real quick review of the staff. We did add a new administrator this year. John Venerable um, will be the new assistant executive director here at the IESA. And just wanted to run through um, the slide briefly to talk about um, the activities that we are all responsible for and encourage you that if you have a question for one of those activities that you email the um, uh, administrator in charge of that activity directly. They will be able to quickest, uh, quickly answer your question. Um, anybody else who received the question will have to forward it on to them and it will take a little bit more time. So there are some staff assignment changes there um, from what some of us have typically been in charge of. So please make sure you review these slides with your coaches for those administrative activities, as well as any other people in your office. The way this meeting is set up is the first grouping of slides is really going to be some bylaw changes as well as reminders, um, things that we get frequent questions on, and then the second grouping of slides will really be activity specific. Um, so we've broken it down into two kind of groupings here. This is simply a reminder, um, students who uh, participate for your school, um, they must attend the member school and they only represent the, that school and competition that they actually attend. We do have a few exceptions to this rule. Um, tuition students as uh, granted by the state school board, special education students if they have an IEP and they attend one school, um, they live in one school district and their IEP sends them to another school. They simply have to pick which school they are going to represent in um, activity, competition, etc. So please make sure um, that you're aware of those students. Feeder schools, schools where there's a K through 6 building that maybe feed into a 7, 8 junior high, you can use those 5th and 6th graders as long as they are members of the association. They don't have to pay the activity fee, but they do have to be a member of the association. Homeschooled, uh, homeschooled students as well as alternative education plans, um, just make sure that you review our bylaws and are familiar with um, the requirements of these individuals. Um, if you have any questions, please give a call to our office. Non-school participation. Uh, this bylaw changed this summer in our June 2012 meeting. Um, beginning with a 12-13 year, a student athlete's ability to participate on a school team and a non-school team is now a local school policy decision. We are aware that many of you have kept this bylaw or this policy within your school code or your school um, rules now uh, and really just want everybody to know it is a local school policy. 
So now if a local school district decides to restrict the non-school participation during the same sports season, any student from that district who disregards this policy will be in violation of a school policy and not an IESA bylaw. Transfer students, um, this is a new change to the transfer student rule. Any student who transfers from one school to another once a school year has started does not become eligible until the student's 11th day of attendance at that school, provided all other eligibility requirements have been met. Previously, um, students were eligible immediately upon transferring once all the eligibility requirements were met. Now they have to sit out for the, until the 11th day of attendance. Physicals. Um, new this fall in our September 2012 board meeting, the IESA Board of Directors approved um, an extension for the physical. So now if a physical is taken from September of 2012 on, any new physical is um, good for 395 days, not the 365 of past. Any existing physicals are still only approved for 365 days, so please make sure that whoever's keeping track of your physicals, whether that's a nurse in your office um, or an administrator or a coach, etc., that they are existing physicals um, taken before September are only good for 365 days. Any new physicals taken after September 7th are good for 395 days. Just a reminder, forms are available. The physical forms are available on the IESA website as well as the IHSA website. Um, so that easily downloadable for parents and schools. Also new, uh, a reminder, a way to, to boost some fundraising and revenue building for your, for your teams. Um, you can now show commercial advertising on the warm-ups of your students. Um, uniforms. This does not apply to the actual uniform. Player uniforms must be in compliance with National Federation High School specifications, but the warm-up itself may now have commercial advertising. The next couple of slides are some reminders on coaching education requirements. Um, please make sure uh, that you are familiar with these. We do still get a fair amount of questions about the coaching education requirements. The really the key thing to remember here is that um, all athletic coaches in member schools must regularly be certified to teach in the schools of Illinois or must complete an approved coaching education course. This applies to all your coaches, whether it be a head coach, assistant coach, a volunteer coach, um, for those track um, teams that have somebody who's just specific to say, for example, the pole vault, it does apply to them as well. First base coaches, third base coaches in baseball and softball, etc. Currently, we do not require non-athletic coaches to take this uh, any course. Um, this includes uh, cheer, scholastic bowl, golf, um, chess, bowling, and music and speech. A reminder of if you're using high school students. High school students may be assigned to assist with coaching of athletic teams, provided they're under the direct supervision of someone who does meet the qualifications. At any time, um, no high school student may serve as the only responsible adult in a gym for practice. Um, they are not allowed to assume head coaching responsibilities. If they're your only assistant coach and the head coach is ejected, um, the game will have to be forfeited unless there's someone who meets the capabilities of taking over, but the high school student cannot. This kind of comes in line as well with um, student teachers. If you're using a student teacher in an assistant role, they are not required to take uh, and a coaching education course. However, if you are using a student teacher in a head coaching role, they are required to take a coaching education course. So please um, note the difference there between student teachers and high school students. Again, um, with the coaching education requirement, I mentioned that you have to be certified to teach in, in, in Illinois. So you've met one branch of the coaching requirement. The other one is you have to meet one of the five criteria on the left-hand side or the right hand, left hand side of the page that you're looking at. You have to be certified to teach and teaching or supervising a classroom or employed full time in an elementary school, junior high or high school, or an assistant teacher, et cetera. So please make sure that your coaches do um, meet those. If they do not, then they are required to take one of the approved coaching education courses. The IESA does um, 
have its own course, which is the coaching uh, ASAP Coaching Essentials course. It's about two to three hours online um, and is the cheapest course of all the courses listed there. If you have an individual that maybe is interested in coaching at the high school level at some point in time, we do honor the IHSA courses as well. They have two with ASAP, the Coaching Principles or the Coaching Orientation course, as well as one with the National Federation, the Coaching Education course online through there as well. Once that is completed successfully, um, they are able to start uh, practice um, coaching at practice and with games. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, please make sure you type them into the chat line below. Otherwise, we'll just keep going. Coaching camps. Um, along with the change in the non-participation bylaw as well, coaching camps and lessons also changed. So now the restriction regarding student participation in camps and clinics during the same sport team is left up, left up to a local school policy. Students may also participate in and or receive private lessons, school physical conditioning programs, and be used for demonstration purposes in another coach's coaching clinic. Use of officials. Uh, schools are required to hire licensed officials for all regular season contests um, in all of our athletic activities. This is a requirement. It is only a recommendation in track and field, um, but in all the other athletic activities, it is a requirement. Failure to hire and use licensed official may result in a financial penalty for the school. The first violation is a written warning from the association, and the second violation, the executive director will have authority to determine and or impose uh, a monetary penalty on the school. So please make sure that you are uh, hiring licensed officials. <clears throat> Additionally, schools need to adhere to hiring the required number of licensed officials, which is um, detailed in our bylaws um, for each activity. I'm gonna go and share a screen here with you for a second, so bear with me. I wanna show you our um, official search tool. So here is the IESA uh, website. When you go to the website, you log in to the member login. It'll be a drop down menu and then you'll put in a password there and you'll log in to the member school. Um, from here, oh, it's not showing it. Hold on one second, let me back out. So again, you'll log in the way we were talking about before. Sorry about that. Um, and the first page you'll see is your activity tracker. If you click on the information tab on this page, you will see uh, it takes you to a different page that has a bunch of resources on there. I um, want to point out real quickly the division meeting presentation actually in a PowerPoint form is available under other resources there. Um, if you wish to show the presentation to your coaches or, or use um, as well for your own use. The search for officials tool is under important resources. If you click on search for officials, this takes you to um, a database that is updated um, directly through the IHSA database. I believe the IHSA updates this every Thursday. And here you can search for officials. So we'll go to a search. We'll search for a basketball official. Um, you select that from your drop-down menu. You can click on um, whether or not you want to look for just certified officials, no preference, um, certified or recognized, etc. The number of years you would prefer them to have, whether they are on a probation or not, as well as how you would like to sort them when you follow, follow this list. And I'll just click on, say we're looking for a basketball official in the Peoria area, and I'll click the search button here. Um, this will give me all the uh, Officials within those zip codes, it will show um, their level of experience. Again, I've organized them by name, number of years, their gender. You can see there under the probation line, officials that are on probation, as well as their contact information. You can go back to a new search, put in different parameters. Maybe you want to widen your zip code. But this is a way for you when you're contracting officials years in advance to make sure that they are still licensed with the IHSA, as well as finding officials for last minute games and so forth. 
I'm going to go back to the activity tracker real quick. Um, this is a great tool that we've put up a couple years ago um, for you as administrators to make sure that your coaches are following through on their um, entering of their entry forms, their, whether or not they paid for the activity. Here's where you can make sure um, your coaches are up to date. Um, you see the dates and deadlines, for example, for the entry form, as well as the contest and ranking steps. Um, you can see assignments pending for the activities. The assignments are not up there for yet, uh, as well as any activity information as well would appear underneath the activity. This is a great tool to use, and we highly encourage you to use it. Again, um, when we're talking about uh, entry forms, submitting rosters and schedules and so forth, um, this is a great way to check up on your coaches um, quickly by entering into the, the system. I'll go back to our presentation now. Um, I mentioned submitting rosters and schedules. Uh, keep in mind that all rosters and schedules and information must be submitted online and posted by the deadline for the given activity. We mentioned that you can track this, which is um, key as there is now a penalty for not submitting this. Uh, the first offense is probation for that given activity. Uh, the second consecutive offense is removed from the state series or a financial penalty. So please make sure your coaches um, are following up on this information. Pro please provide the birth date information for each participant in the entry form and your regular season tournaments and contests. Um, this is simply a reminder. Make sure that your coaches are not entering B contests or B scheduled games. You're only submitting your contests um, for your A team or your varsity team. I mentioned the activity tracker when we were on the screen sharing. Um, emerging activities. We have several emerging activities. Um, we had hoped to offer boys volleyball and co-ed soccer for the 13-14 school year. Um, we did not receive a commitment of 40 schools um, by September 1st, so the activities were postponed. Um, we were asked by the Board of Directors to create a registration process for this for these activities for emerging state series activities um, and we are in the process of doing so and we'll present something to the board in their January meeting. Um, the Soccer Advisory Committee also met uh, recently to discuss um, some possible changes and has made several recommendations to the Board of Directors as well for the activity of soccer. You can see those minutes on our website on the soccer page. Um, those will be the minutes that will be um, shared with at the January Board of Directors meeting. We really do hope to get both of these activities off the ground into a state series, but really have discovered that uh, when... Uh, offering a state series, um, we have uh, run into some more difficulties as opposed to just adding state contests like we did in golf and chess and bowling. So we will be working on this and trying to improve this system so that we can get these activities off the ground. Social media, info and news regarding the association, state tournaments, member schools, students' accomplishments, etc., are found on the IESA social media, media pages. Um, we have been utilizing our Facebook page uh, quite a bit this year for our state tournaments. It's really important that um, you can give these links out to parents um, so that they can follow up on some of the accomplishments of their students through the various uh, newspaper articles and pictures and so forth that we've been taking at our state tournaments. Um, if you have any articles that um, highlight some of your student accomplishments, if you want to email those to Nicole at IESA.org, she'd be happy to put those up on the Facebook page as well as any of our other accounts. Um, we do have a Pinterest account as well as Twitter and YouTube. On our Pinterest page, we are um, highlighting some past athletes, um, professional athletes who participated in IESA member schools at one point and another. Just a reminder again as we move into the next section of our slides, the, scholastic, the activity slides. Um, please remember to stay online for the survey at the end, um, as this is where we will be taking attendance from. So when I've ended the session, you will see a survey pop up. If you do not, please email us and we will get um, the survey emailed to you. 
Scholastic Bowl. Um, based on feedback from coaches and moderators, we made a slight change to the competition room setup. We did utilize this room setup at the state tournament last year, and it did um, work quite well. So essentially what you're going to have there is the moderator table setting up, um, facing the coaches and fans. The two team competition tables will be perpendicular to the moderator table. They can be back set back a little bit so the moderator is able to see all five participants on each team. We'd like to have the coaches sit in between and right in front of the moderator table behind their student tables and the team tables um, on either side. This will better help the moderator to control some of the issues we've been having with sportsmanship. Um, in the activity of Scholastic Bowl. The IESA is the rules uh, writer um, for the activity of Scholastic Bowl in the state of Illinois for junior high. Um, so the rule book will be or was mailed recently to all schools participating in Scholastic Bowl. There are several rule changes there that we just want to highlight real quick. Um, when articles are, are given in an answer, they must be correct. However, they are not required anymore. This is a change to previous rules. Um, when you're using a lockout system that in recognizes two individuals responding to an answer, please make sure that the moderator resets um, to allow the other team to respond on a rebound. And this is really a clarification. Um, the Answer must be stated within three seconds after an individual has been verbally recognized by the moderator. So once the moderator recognizes the individual, there is a three second time period before the answer must be given. Some general information concerning the activity. We will once again be hosting the state tournament, Peoria Civic Center. It was a phenomenal facility for us, um, and it will start at 1 o'clock. Um, the actual matches will begin at 1 o'clock. There will be a team meeting at 1230 that all teams are required to attend. A reminder for Scholastic Bowl, similar to the online seating process that we talked about before, um, must make sure you're entering only your varsity schedule into the season schedule and results, and please make sure um, that all scores entered online um, include any different formats you're in, for example, NAQT scores from regular season as well. Our chess tournament um, will be held at a new location this year. It will be held at the ISU Bone Student Center. Um, because of the change of venue, we had to make a change for this year only in the date of the tournament. So the tournament will be held March 22nd and 23rd uh, in 2013 and will return to the end of February in the 2014 year. But because of the change of venue, for them to get us in and onto their schedule, we had to make a change this year. Some general tournament details, um, it is a $15 per student entry fee. You can enter one student um, or you can enter seven students uh, in seventh grade and seven students in eighth grade. Um, this is an individual tournament as well as a team tournament, so either way is acceptable. There is a board Swiss format um, with five boards, um, One, the board one being your expert board and board five being what we would call more your novice players. Um, you are able to um, enter multiple players um, on board five. So, for example, if you have seven students and you want to put five of those seven students on board five, maybe one on board one and one on board two, but leave three and four open, that is an option for you. Um, uh, if you have three students only participating and they're all at the novice level, you can put them all on the novice board. Um, but only one score will be kept um, for the team award. Uh, there were also some changes made to the tournament time schedule. Um, we will be starting earlier on Friday and playing more rounds on Friday in an attempt to hope to get the students home earlier on a Saturday at the final. It is a two-day event, a Friday and Saturday, um, and so please keep that in mind when signing up for the activity. Students who participate in speech, our speech activity, gain the skills and confidence to communicate more effectively. These are life skills that they will use throughout their professional and student uh, careers. 
General information concerning our speech tournaments, they are held in the fall of every year, um, the end of October. They're starting up here shortly, as well as um, the first couple of weeks in November. It is a one-day contest and a great way to get some students involved in the activity of speech. This is the fourth year we've had a fine arts recognition program. We do this for speech as well as for music. Um, nomination materials are available on the IESA website. So please take some time this fall to nominate some of your speech coaches or your music directors. Um, there is a category for both a veteran as well as a new speech coach and music director. Um, great way to recognize some of these people in your schools is through this award. The Speech Award is presented year annually at the workshop each fall, um, and the Music Award, since we no longer have a music workshop, will be sent directly to the school um, for the schools to share with the, the music directors. Academic eligibility is required for speech students, so we recommend that you start um, checking your student, your speech students in your grade check prior to the contest so you're not surprised by any students not meeting the academic requirement. Um, there is a contest host rotation for every area, every speech contest area. Information regarding this host rotation is available on our website. So if you anticipate a problem when your school comes up for their rotation in the hosting, um, please make sure you contact uh, Nicole, the administrator for speech, in advance. This year we changed the music co-op requirement. It's essentially we've eliminated music co-ops, um, the, the necessity to apply for a co-op. So uh, schools are able to enter into all of our organization activities. Um, some general information about music. We do have four music host dates available for the host school to select. This is something that the host school will select, um, the date that works best for their facility. A great way to um, Highlight some of your music students in your schools is through our national anthem and pep band performers at the IESA state tournament. You do not have to participate in IESA music to participate. Um, be selected for a national anthem performer or pep band. We do allow individuals as well as groups to perform at our state tournament. You just have to submit a CD disc with the performance to the IESA office by November 5th, and then they will be contacted by the music administrator, John Venerable, in early December. Um, all submissions must be submitted to um, by an IESA member school, but you do not have to participate in IESA music to participate in national anthem and pep band. Our bowling state competition is once again going to be held at Joliet um, Town and Country Lanes. Um, it will be March 22nd and 23rd. There has been a slight adjustment to the tournament schedule um, to help remove some of the lag time that has been in there. Um, so it's a shortened time between both the warm-up and the competition round. Starting new this year, we, there will be team awards. Uh, to total cumulative pinfall through the entire tournament will be counted for each school and team awards will be given to the top three teams in the boys division and the top three teams in the girls division. Another way to um, get students involved, you do not have to uh, submit an entire team, you can submit individuals for this activity as well, but the team award is new for the activity. In baseball, the administrator, Steve Ensley, would like us to give you a couple um, reminders. Uh, basically, the negative three drop bats must now have a BB core label, as the BESR label is no longer um, legal. Um, coaches, please make sure that you have a conversation um, with your players and your coaches that you cannot bowl over a fielder. It's an automatic ejection when this occurs, um, so please make sure that they know this um, going into their seasons. We just had our cross-country state meet a couple weeks ago, and a reminder to all of those who don't participate in cross-country, it's a great way to get an individual involved as well as a team. Um, it's still our fastest growing activity. As you can see there, um, we added 18 schools uh, this past year, and we did expand to three classes this past year for the activity. A couple significant things to talk about with the basketball slide. We did make a change to the individual limitations for basketball. This is very significant. There's a regular season contest. Students will be limited to a maximum of five quarters per day. 
The maximum number of quarters um, allowed for the student in the entire regular season was raised to accommodate this increase to 110 quarters per season. The quarter limitation did not change for regular season tournaments, but did change for regular season contests. So please make sure your coaches are aware of this change. A couple of things the advisory committee wanted us to bring to everyone's attention. Um, when you're posting games, when you're hosting regional and sectional turn or regional tournaments and the posted game times for those state series games, um, please don't start them any earlier than the, the game time was listed on our website. Um, when you have people traveling to these games um, and you start a game earlier, um, not only will you hear it, but we will hear it as well. So please make sure that the times you've listed for the games are the start times for those games. Make sure that your coaches and ca captains are participating in the required pregame conference prior to all contests. Um, and please review the pregame runout protocol with your team. Um, there has been some issues in the past, and we just want to make sure everybody's familiar with this heading into the season. You can print up and distribute scorekeeper instructions found online from your bench crew. Um, this is a great tool to use with new bench crew. Make sure everybody gets on the right page for how to keep the score book. There was a question there about district and conference regulations superseding IESA rules. You cannot, uh, IESA rules, if you're participating as a member school in a given activity, um, district or conference regulations cannot supersede IESA rules. So please make sure um, that your coaches are aware that they can't set, away, set aside any IESA bylaws, um, even if they're mutually agreed upon. Um, you have to follow the bylaws and the rules governed by the IESA for the activity. Um, this includes federation rules as well. You can't just set aside rules um, for the federation rule book as well. Um, if you have a coach or a fan or a player ejected um, at your facility, please uh, fill out one of the uh, sportsmanship forms that can be found on our website and send this to the IESA office. The officials are responsible for when they eject somebody for completing a form, but it's helpful for us if we get the forms from the host school as well. And volleyball, uh, for regional and sectional play, if you're a host, um, please make sure that your court is ready to play 45 minutes prior to the scheduled start of the match. This does mean that the net is up and ready for officials to check um, 45 minutes prior to the match time. We have made a change to our warm-up time. Um, it is no longer the 4-4-4-2. Um, it is now two minutes of shared time on the court and then three minutes uh, for the home team, three minutes for the visiting team for the entire court, three minutes for the home team, and finally three minutes for the visiting team for the entire court. This did not um, extend the entire a warm up. It is still the same amount of time. Um, it just changed the format a little bit and it now is in line with the IHSA uh, warm up as well. When teams are off the court um, during this warm up, ball handling is permitted if the space is permitted. So if space is limited, then teams will be restricted to ball handling behind the end line. We didn't make any individual limitation changes in volleyball like uh, was done in basketball, um, but it is uh, a big reminder that we wanted to put forth the advisory committee. Students are limited to a maximum of three sets per day in regular season um, play and four matches per day uh, in regular tournament and state series play. The penalty is automatic forfeiture of contest at the time the student became ineligible, and then the coach is ineligible to coach for the next two interscholastic contests. A couple points of emphasis that the advisory committee wanted us to bring. Um, removal of any part of the uniform in the playing area is unsportsmanlike conduct and, is a pen and will be penalized as such. This is a federation rule. Um, there's really no reason for a junior high student to be removing their shirt or something along those lines um, in the playing area. So please make sure your coaches are aware of this. Uh, sportsmanship is important every year um, and taunting will not be tolerated. Um, taunting is including any kind of insulting or antagonistic behavior as well as cheers that are directed towards the net and towards the opponent. So please make sure your volleyball coaches are aware of this. 
In wrestling, um, we continue to seed eight wrestlers in each weight class. However, the varsity records um, will be the only matches used to determine seeding. And what essentially we mean by this is if you have a wrestler who comes into the seeding process with a 22-1, and one, but only two of those are varsity matches, then that wrestler must be drawn into the bracket with um, while a wrestler at the same weight class who has a record of 4-14, four and 14, but all 18 matches at the varsity level are at varsity level, then they may be seeded. Um, so that's a little bit of some information out there. Um, the administrator for the activity wants us to remind you that the National Federation Rule 2-1-5 stipulates that there must be 10 feet of space surrounding the mat. And another reminder, we just, uh, the board of directors in the September meeting just approved the NIU Convocation Center uh, contract through 2018. So this contract was extended. We had some significant changes in the activity of track and field. Um, the individual limitations, a student may now participate in any four events with one exception. If a student is listed for two relays, one must be the four by four. But in essence, if your student wanted to participate in four field events, they could now do that. If they wanted to participate in four running events, the 100, the 200, the 400, and 800, they could do so. The only restriction is if they're participating in multiple relays, then one of those two relays must be the four by four. Um, relay teams may have five students listed, and any four of the five students listed may run at either the sectional or the state level. The relay will count towards the eventual total for all five athletes, so please take that in consideration when completing your um, sectional entry form. We're going to tweak the time schedule a little bit for the state tournament and now begin the running events at 1.15 on Friday. This is simply done to help with a little bit of the conflict um, with uh, field events on Friday and maybe get a little bit further on in the field events before we add in the conflict with the running events. At sectional meets, if you, uh, in the 100 meter dash and the hurdle round of competition, if the numbers dictate, you may reduce um, the number of races that you're uh, competing or that you're running, excuse me. The new qualifying standards are now available and posted on the IESA website, so you are able to, to print those up for your coaches now. A really uh, Key thing to talk about, especially if you have multiple track and field coaches or you as administrators have information that you would like to have input, is there will be a survey that will be taken before the sectional um, entry center. It will be shown one time. Once it's completed, um, it will be entered into our database for your school and you won't see that survey anymore. But there are three really uh, key things um, that the advisory committee is looking for information. Is there any interest in adding this, the triple jump to the state series? Is there interest in alternating the boys and girls running slash field events at the sectional meet? If the boys run first while the girls do field one year, that would be flip-flopped in the opposite year of that. And then the IESA will provide several new state formats um, for the memberships to vote on. Uh, we have reached our maximum at the state tournament, um, and for us to be able to continue to run the state tournament, the number of athletes uh, or the format uh, needs to have some sort of change. So there will be several options for state formats there for the membership to vote on. A couple points of emphasis. Um, make sure that all your uh, coaches and athletes for all meets know what the designated restricted areas are. Um, coaching is prohibited in this restricted area and could result in a disqualification from the event. Make sure that um, your coaches are attending or somebody from your school is representing your school at the seed meetings as these are mandatory. Uh, sectional meet time and places will be made available to coaches and athletes when results are final. So just a reminder to make sure that your finish line judges or your finish line personnel do not distribute this information in advance. Athletes may not participate under a false name. Um, this violation could jeopardize your team's uh, ability to participate in future contests. And if you're holding any exhibition events, um, these should be counted in the event total for the athletes, and these limitations should be followed for all interscholastic meets, not just the state series. A couple key National Federation rule changes and reminders. I'm not sure we have anybody doing this at the junior high level, but the use of the cartwheel technique in the shot put is now a foul. 
um, new this year. The standards uh, for the pole vault, um, the setting for them has now been changed a little bit to 18 inches to a maximum of 31 and a half inches in direction of the landing surface. And just a reminder, um, we will be conducting a run-up start in the 800 and the 1600 at the State Series and should be used in all your meets. This is where the competitor takes a position three meters behind the start line. And with the command from the starter on your marks, all competitors will step to the start line without delay. And when they are steady, the starter will fire the gun. So this is really key for um, everybody to, to recognize. We will, if you have the ability to mark out this three meters on your track, we encourage you to do this. We will be doing this at the state tournament as well. Um, so we will be defining what that three meter mark is behind the start line for the 800 and the 1600. We completed our second year of our state golf tournament um, on September 8th. Um, you can see some general information there. Some really key things that I want to highlight for you about uh, golf is when entering golfers into the state tournament, it's extremely average that a correct, extremely important that a correct average score um, is entered for assigning tee time. So please make sure that you're communicating with the students you're entering into the activities of what their average score is for 18 holes. Um, please make sure that your parents and coaches know the IESA rules. We do not currently require you to have a certified coach for the activity, so there are a fair amount of parents that are bringing students to our state contest, um, but it's important that they are familiar with the IESA playing rules. Um, for example, it's continuous play. We do not stop for lunch. Um, and the students must be registered at the event um, one hour prior to their tea time. And they have to report to their actual tea 10 minutes prior to the tea time. These are just a few key things. Also, um, as a reminder, the registration for this activity is in the spring, and it's based on a first-come, first-served basis. We have filled up the boys' side two years in a row um, and have had a waiting list, so if you're interested in competing, um, please make sure you sign up first thing in the spring. And our final activity slide is concerning cheer. Um, after the Monday of week 28, schools must uh, now remain in the division in which they were originally entered. Um, previously, if you had had uh, a downsize in your squad, you were moved down to a different division, but now you will have to stay in the division in which you were entered, um, whether this is injuries or ineligibilities, et cetera, to your squad. So as of January 7th, 2013, for this year, the time schedule that is sent to all the schools remains relatively the same. It is um, not permissible to participate in a division with more squad members from which the division allows. There will be some additional trophies awarded in our cheer competition. When there are one to nine teams entered in a given division, only a championship trophy will be presented. When there are 10 to 19 teams entered, we'll give a first and second place trophy. And then when there are more than 20 teams entered in a division, there will be a first, second, and third place trophy given. The competition takes place on January 19th at the Peoria Civic Center. The entry fee obviously is $60 for each division that you're entering. And team awards are announced at the competition. All schools within a given division will be announced in their actual place. So um, these are just a few changes that were made to the activity of cheer. And this is the end of our um, session. If you have any questions, um, we'll give it a couple minutes here for you to type them in below. We really, truly appreciate um, your time. Um, thank you for attending. Um, Please, again, remind yourselves to wait for the survey. Uh, it will not appear until after I have ended the session and logged out. So um, please remember, if you are representing more than one school, that you can uh, complete the survey with all the schools you are representing in this line. Thank you again for attending. And um, if there are no further questions, I'll go ahead and stop the broadcast and end the session. And everyone have a, a wonderful day.